Yeah, the pre-famine immigration to Canada is probably the most important. And what's not known, and because oftentimes the famine migration is seen through the filters, or sorry, migration from Ireland is seen through the filters of the famine, it, it isn't readily recognized that 450,000 Irish men and women migrated to British North America prior to the first potato ever rotting in the ground in 1845. So as early as the 18th century, you had uh, Waterford and uh, Wexford fishermen uh, availing themselves of the plenty of cod on the Grand Banks, eventually settling in Newfoundland. And that Newfoundland migration really creates one of the first major Irish communities in British North America. And most of them come from the same north, uh, southeastern uh, area of Ireland. Uh, we have Irish migration to what is now Nova Scotia as they build the fortifications, uh, General Cornwallis in 1749. You have Irish migration to New Brunswick uh, in the Miramichi in the, in the north and in the uh, Bay of Fundy area in the south. And then of course you've got uh, tens of thousands of Irish migrants uh, going to Lower and Upper Canada and carving out farmsteads outside of Montreal in the Montrégie uh, region now and in the eastern townships. Uh, the upper Ottawa Valley, so in what would now be uh, uh, Renfrew County and Pontiac County on the Quebec side, and then well into uh, the western peninsula of what is now Ontario. And so by 1845, you have very well established both urban and rural Irish communities. The other thing that's not readily recognized is that about two-thirds, I mean, two-thirds of this Irish migration was Protestant and not Roman Catholic. And so you have interesting links between not only Northern Ireland and particularly Upper Canada because of the migration patterns coming out of places like Belfast and Derry or Londonderry, whichever you prefer, and also Protestant migration from the Midlands counties. So in counties that used to be known as Queens and King, Leash and Offaly, uh, Tipperary, uh, coming to Canada as well. And so the interesting mix is that most of the Irish migrants to Newfoundland would be Roman Catholic and the same for Nova Scotia. There's actually almost a 50-50 mix of Protestant Catholic in New Brunswick, mostly Catholic in Quebec for obvious reasons because of the presence of the Catholic Church there and a, and a feeling of comfort, but also then um, a lot of Protestant migrants going to the largely Protestant province of Upper Canada. So that's a feature of, of Irish migration that's not often thought of. First, that they're largely pre-famine. Second, that they're mostly Protestant. And third, they're largely rural. So what's interesting is that the difference between Irish migration from to Canada and the United States is that in British North America, in Canada, they're primarily rural. So you'll find Irish people on farms more readily than in the United States, where they tend to settle in cities. And uh, so you have the stereotypical Irish uh, inner city dweller, laborer, feckless patty as they'd be called uh, in Boston or Chicago or Philadelphia and all kinds of other cities along the American seaboard. Whereas in Canada, if you were to find an Irish person, yes, you would find them in the cities, but you would more readily find them in places like uh, the, the counties outside of Toronto, in western Ontario, in the Huron Tract, in the upper Ottawa Valley. So this is a, a really significant difference uh, in terms of the way in which we know and perceive Irish migration. Then, of course, the big push uh, in terms of the last mass migration of Irish to British North America is in 1846, 47, and 48 when the famine migrants come uh, to, to British North America.